soap around. I mean, it's uh, find a reason for God to love you. Love, love, love. And when you compare what you think to His Word, you find out oh, there's not really a, a reason. He's just that good. He's just that good. So not to us, but to His name, the Lord. If you can remember that last part of what I just said, you'll do great. So prayer is this part of it.
need your life. We need your spirit. So we pray that you would fill us with your spirit this morning, that you would encourage us in our hearts and our spirits, that you would help us to encourage each other and to be the people that you want us to be. Lord, thank you for your presence. Thank you for all you do for each and every one of us. For you carry us day in and day out. Lord, we just pray that you'd open our hearts and our minds to your word this morning. Be with Don as he brings your word. Give him wisdom and sharing the truths that you'd have each of us here this morning. And help us to take it to heart and to apply it to our lives. That we might be effectual doers of your word. Lord, thank you again for your presence. The fact that we can praise you and just lift you up in song. Glory be to you, Lord. Thank you again. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning. Uh, today, you tell about the Psalms, we're going to talk about glory. Uh, the, Lord, the Lord spoke to me a little bit about when I was reading the passage, and that's uh, um, Acts chapter 17. I'm sorry, Acts chapter 7. And uh, the story of Stephen. So, Acts chapter 7, in verse 55, it says this, But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God. And Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. And I got to thinking about that. The glory of God. Can you imagine to see the glory of God? What would that do for you? I mean, it, 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 obviously it helps Stephen. And Steve, Stephen's about to be stoned. He's about to be, you know, he, he just preached a great message. And now he's going to get stoned. <laughs> so I, I don't know I'm too worried about getting stoned. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but he had a good message, but he did... Uh, he he he, uh, he let them know what the word of the Lord was and and uh, and but he saw the glory of God and I just got to thinking about the glory of God and I thought man I need to talk about that sometime I need to 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 to, to expound on that now there's uh, different definitions of in Vine Vine's book on, on Greek words um, he has the word uh, glory means doxa it means uh, and then doxazo means to glorify. It means to magnify, to extol, to praise, ascribing honor to Him, acknowledging Him as to His beauty, attributes, and acts. Glorify means to honor, to make glorious, to, make, to magnify. And um, so I looked up at the definition. Now, I started studying this. I thought, this is great. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a message on glory. And then I started studying. 376 words or times glory is mentioned in the Bible. <laughs> and I started studying that, I thought, I just got overwhelmed. There's so many different meanings to it and angles and things. And I thought, I started studying, I thought, man, there's just too much here. There's too much here. But I, I thought, no, this is good. I need, I need to cover this. But uh, the definition, I looked up the definition. Uh, side so it says, the glory, very great praise, honor, or distinction, bestowed by common consent or renown. It means a, a, a sentence to illustrate is to win glory on the battlefield. Another, another, there's like ten definitions. We'll go through some of them. But two, something that is a source of honor, fame, or admiration. A distinguished ornament or an object of pride. Number three, adoring praise or worshipful thanksgiving, as in give glory to God. Number four, resplendent beauty or magnificence or prosperity. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Resplendent beauty. Uh, verse five, the fifth one, a state of splendor, magnificence, or prosperity. And the final one, there were like 12 of them. And another one it says, to exalt with triumph, rejoice proudly, such as the sentence, he glorified, 
He gloried in his victorious patriots, or eagles, or anybody with things. But uh, uh, glory. So, what's it mean to glory? Um, I think a tuning fork is kind of kind of an idea of, of glory. If you, I don't know if you know. I mean, so you, you know, you remember this from school. But if you take a tuning fork to set at a certain pitch, say C, and you hit it, it vibrates. And then if you take another tuning fork that's set the same pitch, and you just bring it by it, what happens is it starts to vibrate. Okay? It vibrates exactly the same as the original one. So this tuning fork did nothing. This, this tuning fork vibrated. And it went out and affected the other one. And, I, and I, one of the aspects of glory is to be affected, to be affected by something that's beautiful, magnificent, and 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 it's vibrating. And it's like uh, one morning you see the sunrise, and it's just beautiful. And it's just for that moment, you know, there's just certain moments you catch it, and you start to vibrate. You, know? <laughs> you just start to see the glory that's in that and uh, I remember I remember as a young person when I, when I was real young I remember we, I went out camp in the backyard uh, my dad or something we, we, we camped out back and I just remember looking up at the stars as I don't know maybe a five year old or something six I don't know and just seeing the stars and I was overwhelmed by the beauty and and just to see it you know and it's like you know i'm glorying you know i'm, I'm you know starting to vibrate because i felt like I, well i just felt it and I, and I think that that is the glory of god and so number there's four points my four points is uh, god's glory number one is all around us Number two is we love to glory. We all love to glory more, some of us more than others, but still, uh, we love to glory. We desire, and it's, it's, it's important to us. Number three, our glory fades. It fades. And number four, Jesus is the king of glory. So, number one. God's glory is all around us. In Psalms chapter 19, verse 1, it says this. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. So the heavens, they're not Swiss. They're declaring the glory of God. When you look out and you see the, the heavens, the stars, the moon, the sun, the sky. You, and a moonlit night, you ever been out there? And the moon is full, and it's just kind of glorious out there. You know, it's just, you know, it's just so neat, that, that, that moonshine, that, uh, that shining on things. And it's just, it's glorious. It says the heavens declare, I mean, they're shouting out the glory of God. And the firmament showeth his handiwork. Not only the heavens, but this creation on the earth is, is showing God's handiwork, the, the excellency of God. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. There's no place you can go where they, they don't see it. There's no language where, where they don't also see the glory of God. If you go to Papua New Guinea, if you go to uh, northern Alaska, wherever, they all see the glory of God. Verse 4, their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the ends of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. So, um, God's glory is everywhere. Now, I noticed this back, uh, one thing I saw back in August 21st, 2017. Anybody know what happened August 21st, 2017? There, your eclipse. Um, the 
the eclipse. Were you out there? Did you look at it? It was cool. Now, Eric's here with me. We were out there looking at it. And I'll, you know, I'm sure you probably know this, but you know, when you see the sparkles on the ground through a tree, you've got a tree with the leaves and it's blowing, and you see the little sparkles everywhere. Well, all that is is images of the sun. That's just images of the sun that you see down there. And you really notice that, obviously, when we had the solar eclipse, because we were out there on the driveway and we're looking up at the solar eclipse and we're looking, you look at the sun, if you don't have some glasses or something, you just see the bright object. You can't even see it it's being eclipsed, but you can, because it's so bright, it kind of blocks it out. But if you look, we look, I looked down at the uh, pavement, and, I, and I, my camera went bad. I did have a picture, but it wasn't very good. Um, but if you looked at the ground, instead of these round circles, you see crescents. You see little crescents of the sun, because all there was was a, a crescent as a moon was going across and blocking it out. And you look on the ground, and there was all these little crescents on the ground. And what it is, it was a reflection of the sun. The image of the sun is just being reflected. And, and I'm going to propose to you that everything glorious that you see in creation around you is a reflection of our God. It's a reflection of His magnificence. I think that's what it's saying in Psalms chapter 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. And sometimes we experience that. Do you ever remember those, those fleeting moments, moments in your life where you just see something so beautiful and so magnificent, it just, it just touches you, you know, because you you're seeing the glory of God in these things, and it just kind of overwhelms you. Now, we don't always have this. You know, we're in our, our lives, we get distracted with things, but every once in a while, we experience it. And you know when you've experienced it. And you want to, what you want to do is you want to say, look at this. Come and see. Look at, look at this. Look what I'm seeing. This is glorious. Now, God's, in all God's creation, there are things that are glorious. Um, music. Music, I think, reflects the image of God. It's, it can be so beautiful. It just captures your heart. Art. When you're looking at a, a beautiful work of art, it, it, it's reflecting the image of God. I think that's what you're seeing. Um, and, and also in your hobbies, the things that you're interested in. Now, one thing that uh, that I saw the glory of God in, that, that you probably may not, is, is insects. Okay? Uh, I just, when I was a kid, I used to collect honeybees. I would take out their stinger and put them in a jar. <laughs> I mean, as a, like a six-year-old, I, mean, I just, I was in, I was fascinated with insects. I just, you know, I watched them, I looked at them, and, uh, and they, they just, I, I think I saw the glory of God. And, and what I, and as my work, what I used to do, I used, when I would find an interesting object, an inter interesting insect, most people don't care. care get them, ooh, it's a bug. That's all you know, it's a bug, give it away, you know. <laughs> But to me, it's awesome. They're awesome. And I, and I used to collect them, and I, I have a wall in my office, and I start putting all these uh, just different beetles and big wasps and hornets, and, and I had them all over my wall. But my daughter and my wife, they were getting freaked out. You know? <laughs> they, just, they didn't appreciate it. You know, they, and they had to work in there, too. And so I had to... I had to think they said they suggested that I remove. <laughs> uh, but to me, it was glorious. I remember, uh, I remember once I, I have a book on insects, and on the cover is the velvet ant, and it, it's, it's a red ant, and, and it's got velvet on it. And I've never seen one before, and I'm not working, and all of a sudden I saw one running across. Whoa! There's one. And I went and I grabbed and I got it. And then I got stung. <laughs> and this red velvet was a particular type of red velvet ant. It's a, it was, it's called a cow killer. The reason they call it a cow killer is because the sting hurts so bad that they say it can kill a cow. But I was excited, man. I didn't care. I, I got it and I caught it and I kept it and I put it on my wall for a while. And uh, and to me it was it was it was wonderful. 
it was just exciting. It was the glory of God. And, and also, I, I, I might tell you, I, I did like to have fun with it. Because, you know, most people, they, uh, they don't know insects. And one bug looks the same to the other. And, there, and there's what's called a pigeon horn tail. And it looks like a hornet. And they drill into trees, and they look like hornets. But you can just, you know, they lay their eggs inside of a tree, and I know what they are. And so I, I, would, I would see them, I'd see them, because I notice these things, I look at these things. And I would, I would catch them, I, I, I would mess around with the guys. And I, and I, I was working, and uh, I saw one, and I said to the guy that was there, I said, I said, do you ever catch hornets? He said, oh, no. I mean, I think they have hornets. I, think, I said, look, there's, that looks like a hornet. And I, and I grabbed it, and he said, oh, good way. Well, I, can't, I can't be stung by one of those. I'll go to the hospital. I said, oh, okay. And, and I put it in my pocket. <laughs> but I, I knew it was just a, you know, what, a sting or anything. But anyways, for me, it was fun. And for me, I, I, I can see the glory, the glory of God in these things. And all creation, all of creation is, even, even insects, shout out the glory of God. Now let me point out one insect that you really should get excited about and really points to the glory of God. And I just heard this the other day. The monarch butterfly. Okay, we, we're familiar with the monarch butterfly. Beautiful butterfly. What they do is they travel, some of them up to 3,000 miles to travel to where they overwinter in Mexico or Guatemala, there's different places. But the ones up in the northeast by Maine, up near Nova Scotia, what they do is this, this little insect. What they do is when they're up here, they live about four weeks, six weeks, and then they get the next generation. So like three, four generations or so. And then this last generation, what they do is they leave, and this one's up, up in that part of the country. What they do is they leave, and they head out over the ocean and travel, he said, 1,200, 1,300 kilometers. It's a little island called Bermuda out there in the ocean. And then they leave there and they travel another 1,500 kilometers all the way to the Bahamas. This insect that four generations have passed and it knows where the Bahama Island is. Now, how are you going to navigate to this little bitty island out in the ocean that you've never seen before? How does this insect, you know, they traveled so many years ago, or the year before, it's great, great, great grandparents have traveled, you know, and here it knows exactly where to go. And it lands on Bermuda, it lands in Bermuda and then it goes and, and feeds on some flowers and stuff, and then goes to Bermuda, and then it goes into Guatemala. Now, if that isn't the glory of God, I don't know what it is. That God, this little insect, knows how to navigate better than any navigation system we've got. They're flying at night a butterfly across the ocean. Many of them, thousands of them, and they overwinter. They declare the glory of God. But, Point number two is we love to glory also. What about us? We like to shine. We love to see the glory in, in nature and, and in the world around us and music and art. But also, we love to glory. Uh, we really do. And if you don't believe it, just watch some cool sports. You know? uh, we love to glory and a good news club or you know anybody that takes care of their kids my wife accuses me of this more than than, than i probably but you know little kids they say look at me look at me look at me, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> they want you to they want you to, to to notice that they want to shine look at, look at how fast i can run look at how far i can jump you know they want to shine they want to glory. They want to have significance. And we want to glory also. And so, uh, you know, uh, when I went to camp, a good news camp, there was a guy there who, uh, who juggled. He was a juggler. And what he said was when he was young, he, he 
he got the Guinness Book of World Records, and he saw that, and he was fascinated. He said, I, I want to be in there. And he picked up, and he learned how to juggle, and he did different things. He talked about how he's in the book, like five, six times, about a bunch of times, because he kept going. But he balanced his pole on his head, like 45 foot in the air with something on it, you know, to set this record. Why are we like that? Because we want people to notice us. We want to glory. We want to shine. We want to say, hey, I'm significant. I have purpose. I have, you know, I, you know, we, you know, we want our 15 minutes of fame. Uh, but that's, that is something uh, that's pretty much in us. The, um, uh, if we don't, if we can't glory in ourselves, especially as we get as we get older, I mean, when you're younger, what do you do? You want to go, you, you, you excel in sports, right? Okay, I'm the, you know, football player, you know, and look at our team, you know, we're going to do this, I'm the fastest, I'm, you know, I'm strong, you know, as a young person, you know, your strength, your might. And other people, they say, okay, well, I'm not very fast, I'm not very athletic, I want to be smart. And so we, they glory in how the knowledge they get. Um, and their academics, and hey, that's straight A's. My child is an honor student, you know, at, at so and so. And then the other one is, my child beat up your honor student you know, <laughs> in their car. But, but they're all glory. We all glory. We want to glory in something that we uh, that, that we are important. Uh, and what we want to be, we want to be number one. Did you ever notice when you go to a sports game, you ever see a big hand? You know, the big hand. How many times do you see a big hand that says number two? <laughs> number three? No. Everybody's number one. You know, we're number one. We're number one. And, and, you know, we're the best. We're, we're glorying. Uh, when France won, won the, um, the World Cup, and some of you probably don't know, I mean, you know, but, you know, who cares? You know, it's soccer, uh, football. Um, but, uh, you know, when they won, they glory. You know, the people of France are glorying. And, and when they won, or, or, you know, we don't do much that around here. We don't lose it with you. <laughs> but we say, um, we say, we won. You know, somebody from France say, we won the World Cup. What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> we won. You know why? Because they're that tuning fork. And that, it's sounding, it's vibrating. And, and they're just joining in. And their, their tuning fork is vibrating. And, and just associating, you know, if we can't get it ourselves, it's associate with somebody who does that. And we can glory. We can glory in that. And that's, and that's what we love to do. I, a good friend of mine, Carl, somebody, some people know Carl, uh, he used to play because he would always root for Duke. He would root for the Patriots. He would root for all the winners, you know? I said, wait a minute, I'm a Bengals fan. I'm a UC fan. You gotta root for your hometown team. And and I and I and that just kind of bugged me. And and, and I, I he was a smart one. I wasn't too bright. Because he was rooting for teams that actually won. You know? That could actually glory. You could actually, you know, you know, like I think, you know, Tony was telling me he, he uh he was rooting for the Patriots, and I think the Giants beat him in the Super Bowl one year. And, and so then he switched, and then he, he got a Giants helmet or something, you know, and the Giants is meant the memory go from that because he wanted to glory in that. And so uh, we all we all want to glory. We all we all want to do that. That's that's part of our nation. It shows us that we're we're significant. But what does the Bible say? In, uh, in Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23, it says this, Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. So if you're real smart, 
and you got the degrees, you know, you're a PhD, and you teach here, and you're a professor and everything. God says, don't glory in that. Don't boast in that. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. If you're the fastest on your team, if you're the fastest, you know, what happens is every year they have track meets. Because everybody, every year somebody's got to prove that they're the fastest. <coughs> that they, they can jump the farthest. And so that they can glory. He said, let not the mighty man glory in his might. <coughs> and then for some of us older people, it said, let not the rich man glory in his riches. Sometimes you go to school, you get your education, and you start to become successful. And you say, look at me. I've got riches. I've attained. My business is success, successful. Now I can glory. Uh, he says, don't let him glory in that. Verse 24, it says, But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. So he says, don't glory in these things, but glory that you know me, that I'm loving, uh, I'm full of kindness, and righteousness, and judgment. He said, that's what you need to glory in. So, number three, our glory fades. Uh, the older you are, the more you understand this. Uh, the younger you are, you might just be uh, starting to get recognition and starting to be uh, respected for what you've accomplished. But uh, our glory fades. Now, uh, the best illustration, I use that in Sunday school. I don't know if I've used that here before, but besides Sunday school. But James Dobson, uh, you probably remember him. Some of you might remember him, Focus on the Family. What, what he did is, when he went to college, before he went to college, he went to the college, and he looked in the college, and he looked at the trophy case. He looked at the trophies. And he was good at tennis. And uh, so what he said, when his body, he saw those trophies, and he, this is the college he was going to go to. And he, he said, one day, I hope, I will get a trophy and put it in this trophy. I'm going to get, he was great, he was good at tennis. And sure enough, he went to college and he got that trophy. He won the trophy. He set his sights on the pole, he got it, and there it was. That trophy was in the trophy case, and he was, you know, glad about that. Well, years, years passed, and somebody called him from the college. I think it was a janitor or something. He said, he said hey, James, he said, I thought you might be interested. He said, I, they were throwing out the trophies. I found your trophy in the, in the dumpster. And I didn't know if you would like to, you know, if you'd like to have that, you know, trophy that you want. That's what happens to our glory. Our glory fades. It fades. People forget. You know, some people might have forgot the Reds actually won a World Series back in 1990. 28 years ago. Uh, it, it, it's a long time ago. Our glory, the glory fades. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, it says this, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've sinned and our glory is short. We, we're, we're defective. We don't, we've come short. We, we cannot, we've sinned against God. We've come short of the glory of God. In Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6, it says, But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, and we do all fade as a leaf. You fade. You fade. No matter how glorious you might accomplish something, it, it's, it, it fades. It says, And our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. And so, we all come short of the glory of God. 
And even though we want to glory, we want to rejoice in what we've done, we've come short. And point number four is Jesus is the king of glory. He's the king of glory. And in Psalms chapter 24, it asks this question. And it, and it hits it pretty hard. In chapter, chapter 24, verse 7, it says, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up the everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? Who is he? Who's the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, for the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Jesus is the King of glory. And um, we need to have Him. We need to have Him. We need to align ourselves with Him. So when He's, he's vibrating His glory, we can, we can glory in that. We can vibrate right along with Him. In John chapter 1, verse 14, it says this, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as a, of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus is, it says it's the express image of the Father. He's the glory of God. He's, he's the image of God. And we, we beheld His glory. And, and we see His glory. It's full of grace. And it's full of truth. And I want to take a minute to look at a, a longer passage here in Isaiah chapter 40. In Isaiah chapter 40, in verse 5, it says this. I think this is real, really good. It says, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. And the voice said, cry. And he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all the goodliness thereof is as a flower of the field. All our glory is like the flower of the field. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Now notice in the next verses, I think this is good. It said, O Zion, that bringeth good tidings. Now we need some good tidings after hearing this, that we're fading, we're, we're, we're like the grass, that's just, that withers and, and, uh, and falls. He says, O Zion, that bring us good tidings. Get thee up into the high mountain. O Jerusalem, that bring us good tidings. Good tidings means the gospel, the, the good news, the good tidings. Lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up and be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. We need to behold God. I think we behold how glorious He is and how wonderful He is. Uh, if we can see His glory, I think, you know, if we see it in, in creation and give Him the glory, um, that would be something. Verse 10. It says, Behold, the Lord will come with strong hands, and His arms shall rule for Him. Behold, His reward with, is with Him and His work before Him. Now, first of all, he says, you know, the Lord's strong, he's mighty, he, he's, uh, uh, he's a, uh, like in military, he's a vic victorious one. He's strong. And then verse, go down to verse 12, it says, Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, and meted out the heaven with the span, and comprehended the dust of the earth in measure, and weighed the mountains in scales, and the hills in a balance. So first, in text, verse 10, it talks about how mighty God is. And then in verse 12, where we see the glory of God in all creation. We can see it. Uh, 
that, you know, in the earth, we see all this, like the monarch butterfly, they, that, that God created this insect that never, ever been there and can fly out and find a little big island out in the middle of the ocean and stay there and fly out. That's glorious, that God could do this. But notice the verse in between, which kind of really struck me. If you look this verse in between, between these two, between his might and his wisdom, you have verse 11. It says, He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom. That's our God. He's mighty. He's glorious. He's done all these things. But you know what he is? He's the one that will pick up a lamb in his gentle arms and carry him. That's our God. He's gentle. He's good. He's the good shepherd. He's, he shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with him. You know, God, Jesus, is a good shepherd. And he wants to carry the lamb in his arm. He wants to, you know, he says he's a good shepherd. He seeks the one that went astray. He left the 99 to go and find him. So he can carry it back in his arms gently. That's our God. That's our glorious God. Jesus is the King of glory. In uh, Luke chapter 19, verse 37, it says this, And when he was come nigh, even now to the, at the descent of Olives, the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice uh, for all the mighty works that he had, they had seen, saying, Blessed be the King, that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven, and glory in the highest. They saw the glory of God. It says in John chapter 1, verse 14, the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. Do you see the glory of Jesus? Do you see the glory of God? Does that make you like the tuning force. Does that make you vibrate? Does that make you, you, know, so you feel the, the awesomeness? Uh, and and that's, that's what we need to do. See, if you got, if it's a, if it's a different tune, if, you're, if it doesn't set at the same, the same like a you know, sound of the sea, then, then it's not going to do that. But if you're in tune with them, then you'll, you'll get that. You'll get the glory of God. And that's what we need to do. We were created in the image of God, and we we're created to give Him glory. And um, uh, I see this so much in, in the woman at the well, in John chapter 4, verse 29. Uh, the woman at the well, Jesus, I must needs go through Samaria. He goes to Samaria, and he sends his disciples away, and there he is dealing with this woman. This woman who, who you know, had several husbands, and she was living with somebody, and she was just a mess. And she was bringing her bucket in the middle of the day to get some water. And what she did, what Jesus did, is he talked to her. And what, what she did is she started to see the glory of God. She saw, why are you a Jew talking to me, a woman of Samaria? And she was, she was blown away about him, him doing this. That, you know, he's very gracious. He's talking to me. And then as, as he went on, Jesus dealt with her and she saw his glory. And she saw how, you know, who he was. And then she, she goes and she leaves and she comes. She says in verse 29 of John, she says, See a man that told me all things that ever I did. It is not this the Christ. She saw the glory of God. And she says, hey, come and see. You need to see this. You know, have you ever watched a, watched a great show and you're by yourself? Man, somebody else needs to see this. You need to see this. This is incredible. Look. I remember 
One time, when I was a kid, uh, there was a show called Fat Apple. <laughs> it's about Bill Cosby, you know. And, and I'm at home. It was very rare. I was home by myself. And they had Bill Cosby on it. And the show was Fat Apple. And I thought, this thing is Ryan. This is awesome. You know. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Anyways, I thought, I, I went to the door and I thought, i got to get some of my friends to see this. You know, there's nobody there. It's like I'm by myself. I want to share the glory. And, and this woman, she said, she runs the city. Come. Come see a man. That told me. She said, I want you to see this. This is glorious. This is awesome. I see the glory of God. You know what it says? It says that she left her water bottle. There. You know, what, what was what she was, you know, you're trying to fill your life with something. You know, you try to, you know, she felt that she had to have a man, and then that didn't work out. She had another one, that didn't work out. And she's trying to fill her life with this, and then finally she meets Jesus, she meets Jesus, and she doesn't need to do that anymore. She's got him. She's got something glorious. We beheld his glory. And so uh, I ask you, have you, have you come to Jesus? Do you see His glory? You need to see it, and, you, and you'll leave. you leave what you have that you think is so precious and so important. You know, this job so important. This, this relationship is so important. All this is so important because it makes me significant. It makes me uh, important. It makes me, uh, it gives me glory. But if you have Him, you can leave those things. I, I, we went, I went with my wife, we went to, um, and we went to Salt Lake City, they had a convention. And so I just kind of tugged, tagged along, and uh, so I got time to run around. I got to look at the Mormon temples and all the stuff, all the things that go on there. It's right there where the big the Mormon temple is, and all the, you know, the Mormons are just big salesmen. They're trying to sell you want Mormonism. And they got all these beautiful things. You just got to see the Mormon tabernacle. Fire for free. But anyway, I'm there by myself, and so I'm sitting there in, in their little plaza, and I see this statue, and uh, this guy's uh, he loaded the statue, and his, the statue, this guy's putting his hand on, and I think, who is this? What is this? And I asked the guy, I was walking by, I said, explain to me this. And, uh, you know, he said, oh, well, that's, uh, that's Joseph Smith, the prophet, and he's he's got uh, James, Oh, no, there was three guys. Actually, there was three of them. And they're holding the... I said, who are these? And they said, that's Peter, James, and John. And they're, they're laying their hands on Smith. They're laying his hands on him, and they're, they're uh, conferring on him the gospel. They say... They, he said, well, they... they, they after they, the, the apostles died, the gospel was lost. And then, you know, now he's restored, restored him to, to, uh, to Joseph Smith, you know. Uh huh. That's strange. Um, and so I asked him, and she, he said, Oh, I'll send someone over to talk to you. And so these two girls come up, and they talk to me, and they, and they, uh, they, they say, Oh, yeah, Joseph Smith, he's a prophet. And I said, Well, wait a minute. Let me, let me get this straight. These three apostles are now giving it to Joseph, and they couldn't even get it, keep it going from yeah. them back then. You know, back back when they were the apostles, they could not give the message to the next generation. They took. I said, they failed. They didn't keep, keep their commission to preach the gospel. They lost it that quick, and now they now they had to be restored. All, I said, does that make sense to you? <laughs> uh, and, and you know, and then I asked her other, other questions and went over. And you know what they did? Finally, the one girl she said. Uh, you're just, you're just blasting my religion. You, you're just, and I wasn't. I was being very, very kind and cordial and everything. But, uh, but, I, but, but what I was doing was, was questioning what she, she thought she had the truth. And I was questioning, how, how, you know, how can that be true? What I was doing was I was trying to take her glory away, what she was trusting in her glory. And I thought, you know, this didn't work too well. You know, she kind of got mad. Left. And, and later on that week, I was in, I was in there sitting there waiting, you know, and, and two other girls come up. And they started talking. I thought, you know, 
it's nice if you want to witness, because they come to you there. <laughs> uh, but anyways, they came up and they, they wanted to talk about the Book of Mormon. And what I thought, I'm not going to try that approach. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lift Jesus up. And I, and, and I said, you know, I said, ask him well, how, about, about salvation. I said, well, let me tell you how I got saved. And I told him how, you know, I was on the street corner going to get, get drunk at a, at a party and everything. And, and two preachers came up and started witnessing to me and showed me that Jesus died for my sins. And, and on the street corner, I trust, I bowed my head and trusted Christ as my Savior. And I, and I said, look at this. I showed him Isaiah 53. They didn't know about Isaiah 53. That, that you know, he, he was the Lamb of God that takes away our sins. He bore our, our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. And I just lifted Jesus up. And I glorified Jesus. And that went so much better. Because... Instead of taking away what they had, I gave them something that was so much better. And they, you know, they thought, oh, yeah, I'll have to read that. You know, I'll have to look into that. And, and lift Jesus up. That Jesus, he's, he's glorified. He's to be glorified. And we need to see his glory. Because you know what? All glory comes from God. Everything glorious that you see, it's from God. He's the creator. And, and we need to give Him honor and glory. But I have to ask you, do you see His glory? Are you, are you uh, trusting in other things? Or are you trusting in the glorious one? The King of glory. Jesus. Who is the King of glory? That's Jesus. So let's, let's bow our heads and we'll have glory. <coughs> Father, we do thank You that You revealed Yourself to us, Lord. That you are glorious and you are a kind, gracious, gentle Savior. And Lord, you're the good shepherd that wants to pick us up like lambs and, and to hold, hold, up, hold us in your arms and lead us gently. And Lord, we just pray that, I just pray that each one here might see this glorious God, this King of glory. And Lord, that we might just uh, feel the glory and we might just rejoice and glorify you for who you are and what you've done for us. And Lord, if there's anyone here that does not know you, I pray that, that they would seek you, they would, that they would seek the glorious one, the King of glory. And Father, uh, pray, we, I pray for those that, uh, for the Christians here, that we might not be distracted with all these things in the world, but Lord, that we might truly take time to, to uh, see what you've done, and, and trust in you and rest in you and glorify you with our lives. And Lord, help us not to waste time. Bless each one that's come out tonight, today. And Father, we ask this.